VCU Health is making changes to the care patients receive before, during, and after surgery so they can get better faster. They're doing this through a program called ERAS, or Enhanced Recovery After Surgery. It's a standardized series of small measures that physicians, care teams, and the patients themselves take that make a big impact on how they recover after an operation. I'm Prakash Chandran, and in this episode of Healthy with VCU Health, we talk to Dr. Michael Scott, who comes to us from the UK and is the Director of Critical Care Anesthesiology at VCU Health. Dr. Scott also spearheads the ERAS program at the VCU Medical Center. Dr. Scott, it is a pleasure to have you here today. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your experience with the ERAS program? ERAS started in Europe at about 15 years ago, and I was one of the pioneers of developing this program, which doesn't actually change the surgical procedure itself, but changes what happens to the patient around the time of surgery, both before, during, and after. The general principles are to make the patient fitter for surgery, reduce the injury and all the uh, harm caused sometimes by interventions that we do in medicine, uh, reduce the amount of opioids patients get, and then accelerate recovery afterwards by removing drips, drains, and mobilizing patients and feeding them very quickly. My experience really first started in about 2002 in colorectal surgery in my hospital back in the UK started pioneering this and slowly in the next few years the whole program has formalized and there was uh, a society called the Enhanced Recovery After Surgery Society formed, guidelines written and since then it's really been the most uh, profound change in surgical care around the world. It's been adopted everywhere and everyone's doing it because it's something that doesn't really cost very much money which empowers patients, reduces complications, and it's good news for everyone. About three years ago, I was asked by VCU whether I'd like to join Virginia Commonwealth University and come and lead the ERAS rollout, and that's why I've moved myself and my family, and we're we're now living in Virginia. Well, certainly wonderful to have you here at VCU, Dr. Scott. And what a phenomenal set of principles that you've laid out for everyone to follow. Um, You mentioned a couple things, but I would like to first unpack what exactly the ERAS program looks like in practice. You mentioned trying to get the patient fit before the operation, but what does that look like? And does this apply to all types of surgery? Maybe talk a little bit about that. Yes. So what we're trying to do is, particularly for major surgery, where you do get significant complications, whether it be pneumonia or some form of sepsis. We look at those patients having major surgery where there's a high risk of these complications or patients themselves who have lots of comorbidities who are at higher risk. And that's the patients we target most. And I think the analogy is, is you wouldn't get in a plane and fly across the Atlantic without making sure that the engines work, that there's enough fuel in the tanks and that we know which direction we're going. So we start basically by reviewing the patient, optimizing all their comorbid healthcare conditions, with optimized diabetes, improve their anemia and blood pressure control, and get all that sorted prior to surgery happening rather than just getting straight into surgery. I see. So once a patient finds out that they need surgery, then what happens? Like, what is the set of procedures that ERAS, I guess, puts forward for them? And what is their experience like at VCU? Yes, all the patients come to a preoperative clinic called the PACE clinic, and they see a specialist provider, either a nurse practitioner or a physician or both, And we refer them to diabetologists who will sort their diabetes out, uh, nutrition specialists if they've got, uh, sometimes if they've got cancer and and they're losing weight. So it's all about building them up before surgery and and making making things better. So even for iron deficiency anemia, 
we might give intravenous iron because it works quicker than just giving oral iron. Yeah, some of the things that you're mentioning sound so common sense, um, but I can totally see that in the absence of a program like ERAS, a lot of these things falling through the cracks. So one of the next things I wanted to talk about was, you know, what does this actually look like for the clinical staff? You know, we talked about getting the patient ready uh, to undergo the operation, but how does how do things change day to day for the clinical staff when they're about to go into the operation? So obviously patient engagement is vital at the start and, and also there's the engagement of of staff so that they know what's going to happen and one i think i think one of the most fundamental changes is everyone knows what's happening in each stage of the pathway right from whether antibiotics need to be given whether the patients need to be mobilized uh, and when to start giving them protein supplements so we we've introduced both what we call a vertical and horizontal implementation and what i mean by that is Horizontal means it's specialty by specialty, so it would be bariatric surgery, orthopedic surgery for hip and knee arthroplasty, or colorectal resection, and we're going through all the major specialties. But also, because all patients should be on an ERAS pathway, all patients go to the preoperative clinic for optimization, all patients are not dehydrated prior to surgery and have carbohydrate loading, unless there's a specific reason not to and they arrive in the hospital in the pre-surgical unit and get loaded with non-opioid analgesics so that that reduces the amount of painkillers they need after surgery. And then we have a standardized way during the operating room we maintain homeostasis with using short-acting anesthetics, uh, keeping the uh, the flow of blood around the body constant and the blood pressure normal by the anesthesiologists reducing nausea and vomiting and keeping the patients warm and then the same process once the patients are awake in the post optive care unit we make sure that they're ready to go to the floor and, and keep optimizing them and making any small changes needed so that when they're going to the floor we know the patient's going to be stable make a good recovery and then the morning after surgery is when a lot of the what we call de-escalation of care happens because that's when the drip's taken down, Foley casters are removed, and the patient is fed. So basically they're then made free of all the other things that otherwise would keep them in bed and, and disrupt their physiology. So the patient will be basically mobilizing and eating and drinking and looking after themselves rather than lying in bed with tubes and drains waiting for nurses to either come around and give painkillers or to be fed. So we're empowering patients to make their own recovery and we're finding that patients very much prefer this. And because we're not doing all these other things, we it actually accelerates recovery and people get home faster. Yeah, it sounds like you have a good way to de-escalate the assistance that a patient is getting so they can recover on their own. Um, but maybe talk more specifically about some of the measures that they can take on themselves after a surgery to help them recover faster. Yes, yeah, so we, we engage patients right from the preoperative clinic and, and try and give them patient diaries so that they know what they're trying to do every day. So to make sure that they, if they can't take a, a full diet, then they at least take protein drinks. They get out of bed regularly. We do monitor their pain, but we stress the fact that function is important, more important. So no longer are we taking the approach to pain of the, the fact that it's a vital sign, which is what's led to the opioid crisis in America. So we now use very little opioids in our pathways. We use Tylenol with some non-steroidals if appropriate with other drugs called gabapentinoids and our acute pain team will put in a lot of regional blocks or catheters which pump local anesthetic to numb the area of the surgery so that patients can still function without getting any pain and that in turn reduces the stress response which means they feel much better. One of the things that I really like about this is it really does seem like it is a true partnership uh, between the medical staff and the patient. And 
they everyone needs to work together uh, to make sure, like you said in that analogy, that the engine is working properly before the flight, during the flight, and after the flight. So it's a really good framework uh, to operate under. I'm curious as to what kind of results patients are seeing under this ERAS program. The thing that's always driven ERAS is the headlines of the short length of stay. Wherever you are in the world, if ERAS is implemented, there's always a, a reduction in length of stay. But the stress is not really on length of stay, it's on, on improved faster recovery to baseline. That's really where the benefit is for the patient. But the interesting thing is now that this has been going on for 15 years, we've been showing with large data sets of tens of thousands of patients, for instance, in the UK, that every patient's on an ERAS pathway, where I was national clinical advisor a few years ago. So it's a standard of care, and you, we saw complications reduce. We've seen the same things at VCU. So we've seen surgical site infection go down, and now we're one of the uh, top performers in the USA on this, with the, some of the lowest rates. And the other great news is that uh, we have almost 40% of our patients don't get major opioids during surgery, and we've almost halved the use of opioids in other specialties. So when we know now that one of the major complications of having major surgery is actually opioid addiction at about 6 to 8%, ERAS is making a major impact on the downstream effect of opioid addiction uh, in patients having major surgery. And I'm sure everyone will agree that that's, that's a great position to be in. So let's say someone is listening to this and they have a surgery at VCU coming up. Is this something that they need to ask for? Is this something that is standard with all operating procedures? Maybe talk a little bit about what they can expect and what they need to ask for. All patients having major surgery, uh, so I'm not talking about day case or minor surgery, but having major surgery will now go to our preoperative clinic and that's when the whole pathway stops. And ERAS is becoming a standard of care. We've already introduced it in seven specialties uh, with another uh, two joining very quickly. But the patients will find that they get the bulk of ERAS principles all the way through now because in the operating room all the anesthesiologists uh, adhere to all the ERAS principles. And so in the post-operative care unit or the PACU as it's called. So so they'll find that really that this is now the new standard of care at VCU. All right, Dr. Scott, really appreciate your time today. That's Dr. Michael Scott, the Director of Critical Care Anesthesiology at VCU Health. Thanks for tuning into this episode. And to hear more about how you can take control of your health, listen to other episodes of Healthy with VCU Health at vcuhealth.org slash podcast. Thanks again, and we'll talk soon.